What is up guys, it's Jordan's 95 here again. And today this is a review of the Disney Pixar's Incredibles 2. Now, Incredibles 2 is the sequel from the first movie. It's a sequel from the first movie, which is the case you now. When that was it. This movie was released, took sorry about my nice. This way it was took, the development took over 19 years or 18 years. Took with the development from the first, second film. That was longest weighing release. Now, I love The Incredibles, the first one. It's one of my favorite of uh, Pixar's film. I do like the comedies, actions, dramas, and very nice little funny movies. So they gave it the finally get to see the sequels. Now, this is a compare to the first one. Now, what is the movie about? This movie takes place years after the first movie, after its defeat of the syndrome. And after that, they say the last one left off against Underman, and then forgot the tired of this. Okay, I'm gonna no spoiler about the plot. So, yeah, let's talk about this. Directed by is Brad Bird. He is a fantastic hey, director from successful The Credibles. He also directed from from. The Iron Giant. Does he remember remember the scene Iron Giant? He has a great performance directors. He also did a Sun Honor Films was. He also did a Ratatouille, which I can't remember it. I'm right, am I wrong? But anyway. The producer producer by John Walker, Nicole Grinnells, and written by was it was starring of it was starring Craig T. Nelsey, Holly Hunter, Sarah Fowl, Huck Miller, Samuel Jackson. Most of our cast performers. The new six iconic was by Michael Giacchino. Giacchino. He looks fantastic. It's kind of like mixed up with James Bond meets Mission Impossible. The other cinematography of my The in so the fish. Some special effects are kind of like did a good job using names. Now that it's hard to compare the first one. So it's... Okay, let's talk about the characters and cast. Craig D. Nelson returned as Bob Hart, better known as Mr. Credibles. He looks funnier. He is a fantastic... He was super strange. One of his fan favorites. He looks so funny on the Thunders. He gets the keys on his own kids that work on his while his mother his work. Speaking of which, Holly Hunter as Helen Parr plays the last girl. Who goes on to work in shapeshifters for Sarah Falls returned voice of Violet Parr. Yes. What else? Oh yeah. Uh Hug Miller or Hug uh Hug Milner, I would say, plays Dash. It's a new voice hacking. It was instead of play by Spencer Fox from the first movie. So yeah, the idea is replace the voice acting, replace them. Next we have Illy Fulgil. Illy Fujil, the the voice Jack Jack, he's non speaking role, just nah nah nah. So he was a voice in of course. Summon Jackson's return plays a Summon Jackson's return back the voice of Throne Zone. Pretty much reprised roles of cast this one. And of course some of the other cast of small roles this one. Unfortunately, let's see. Oh yeah, Brad Bird's return, the voice of Edamon. He's a pretty funny moment. He's he only has small roles. This character only has small roles about this one. Okay, speaking of small roles, Jonathan Bank as Agent Rick Digger. Yeah, Agent Rick Digger. This time he's voiced by Jonathan Bank. Instead of voiced by Bud Lugley, but in case you know, but unfortunately, Bud Lugley passed away. He passed away back in February 2018. I can't remember. I think he passed away in February. Which is kind of sad, but he also made Pierre in the credit roles in memory of Bud Lightly. He's a Rick Digger who's now, he's retired. But only this time, he decided department. He's a dark government. He decided retired. He's been in the shutdown. His environment. What else? What else? Uh, oh, yeah. Michael Bird plays. Oh, yeah. Michael Bird as Tony Ridger. Tony Riddinger, 
he only appears as another small role. He's love interest of Violet. Now, again, that spoiler plot layer. So, Sun introduces new characters. Sun introduces new characters. We introduce new characters like, let's see, uh, oh yeah, Bob Argo, Bob Aldenkirk plays Winston Diver, who is a fan of superhero. He likes to like, work in a company, so called David Tax, as well. What else? Oh yeah, Catherine Kenner, Catherine Kenner, Catherine Kenner, who plays Evelyn Diver. She's a young sister of Winston. Now, now here's a big spoiler, but I'll get it at a moment later. The cells. So, some of the cast was. Some of the actually small roles and inches. Some of the small roles. We also get new superhero members we've never seen. Him. Let's see. Void. He's. She's a shy looking. She's. She's a some kind of portal dimension. Uh. What else? Gus Byrne, he was the old man. He shoots a lava's vomit come out of his mouth. I mean, like, gross. Screes, she is a look like an owl part man. It kind of looks creepy looking. She's just screeches noise sound, high pitched scream. Brick, he looks really tall guy. He's super stronger. And he's voiced by non speaking role. He just, duh. And Crusher. Or Crusher, Crusher, or Crusher, I'm sorry, I hope to say pronounce. It is voiced by Phil Lamar. So, I guess that's what else then? Um, oh, yeah. Isabel Rosen plays in Rosalind. So, it's a nice, there's always a the coolest moment there, are some funny moments. Like Jack Jack versus Raccoon, where Jack Jack, well, Bob has fell asleep, and then Jack Jack gets caught up. The. He gets caught by the raccoon. It starts fighting. It's kind of a hilarious fight scene. And also, the Jack Jack gets super power the first time. Now, in the first movie, he has metal power, flame fire, and monster form. That's about it. Then this one, he has a ton of them. One is a multiple clone. One is the laser kind of has eyes. One is jello ooze or whatever. I can't remember it. And one is turns a flavorful fat and turns giant like a flavorful balloon. Well, it's gotta be at the funniest moment. Hopefully, not sure. Oh yeah, the credit mobiles. Okay, I might be a spoiler, and I will get that moment. It's a actually funny moment. There's also action scenes. It sounds like a comedy moment. So that's a funny moment. There's also a sad moment, but I'm not gonna spoil it about this. There's the actual climax. This one is. There's my only biggest complaint, but somehow obviously the villain was also Evelyn, which. Well, I'm not going to swear without getting into that. Was... Oh, yeah. Speaking of villain, the screen slaver voiced by Bill Wise. When at first I saw him, he's creepy. He looks... He's creepy as... Hmm. He's creepy. He looks scarier. He wears a goggle. He's hypnotized. Like, wears a goggle. He gets brainwashed, all of them, except... Now... <clears throat> but turns out, but that's... Not... Okay, that's the ones, but I'll get into a spoiler about this. Also, John Risenberg plays the Underminer. He's only about small, it's only about five minutes. Underminer is only played a small role about five minutes or two minutes or something. He just small roles. He, he's, that was it. He just he got away, he just disappeared. Okay, enough of that. Ultimately, Incredibles 2 is a very excellent film. It's a very gross. This movie was budget over is this movie is run over 125 minutes. This movie is budget over 200 million dollars, and his box that was over 94 free 943 point three million dollars happens to be the most highest gross anime movie, and happens to be the number one best Pixar film since the Toy Story 3. I know, put the pitchfork down. And it was also the highest gross film in the summer since the Avengers The Infinity Wars. Ultimately, I'll give us a 9.1 out of 10. Alright, enough of that. Now, here comes the spoiler. Ready? 3, 2, 1. The film started where the last one let the, the Credible Stanley, that's 
takes place after the syndrome, where the last one left is the Undermare, is now the cliffhanger, now they've chased him. Unfortunately, Undermare got away, he just, after he used escape by drills. They finally stopped the giant drill to say, but unfortunately, the cop is not happy, they get surrendered. He gets abandoned, he gets super sued, he gets it illegal. Now they were just legal. Then Rick is trying to help it, but they can't help it, he gets a razor memory apparently. Also, Tony is a razor memory, which is kind of odd. After it was frustrating, was gets shiny dinner. So one day, until this guy, Winston, he was a fan of superhero, he wants to go help and joins us. He went cut to the, some company called David Towers. He wants to buy a superhero, but he shoes Elastigirl, not Mr. Credibles. So he leaves behind Mr. Credibles as well to keep his eye on kids. But he spotted his new house as well. So Elastigirl goes on job, but goes on fine with this. He goes on mission to stop the train, he gets overloading on the figures. After stop the train, we find a mysterious one called Screen Slaver. Meanwhile, Bob is trying to teach Violet Dash and Jack Jack. Jack Jack's fine, Dash is fine, but Violet has a problem. She starts transforming to hissy fit and she starts crying. Oh, there's one funny scene she gets she grabs an ice cream, which is pretty funny. And was out it. Later at night when Bob gets sleep well. While Jack Jack gets caught by him, he went outside with the King Woods, by the way, it was funny. We find out Bob has finally realized he has a superpower. Meanwhile, lots of girl then meets a group of the team as the superhero, including Screech, Boyd, the Gasburn, and Brick. He went around the later night <coughs> also forgot to mention. There was the young minister who was getting caught by the helicopters, losing control by another by a screensaver. Then we finally rescued Amnesty safely. However, the next morning, after later on, he went to find out who his screensaver is. He went later night, he went finally found the screensaver. But it turns out he gets finally gets unmasked. It turns out it was Pisa Guy. It was like, what the heck? What's the real one? But it's Later night, and it was the next morning at the same time, Bob's gets breakfast was. However, Violet starts, she's super angry because he reveals he was a race of memory by Rick Digger. And after a frustrating entire moment, is, he went take Jack Jack goes in Edna mode and will try to take care of it. He went return home, Bob gets frustrated, he gets ruined and upset. But then it becomes change of heart, there's a mistake, he runs a family reunion. Meanwhile, Lazar Girl had a celebrate party with. We find out the last girl she's a mistake. We find out revealed has a some kind of security camera. But we find out reveals me who's the real screensaver? Evelyn. Yes, Evelyn. This she reveals she's a bad guy. She is a real mess screensaver behind. So yeah, he gets a mastermind. He takes control of brainwash. So let's go kidnaps her and gets brainwashed her. Later on, we then cut to contact baby say with Lucian. So, ah, uh, yeah, of course, things are was, and of course, John Jack went over his thing. But it's all fun and games until the emergency phone call was when Mr. Credible went to rush in to check on you know, the last girl. And, you know, but unfortunately, Elastico beats the crap against Mr. Credible and gets brainwashed. Meanwhile, Jack Jack and the others was all fun and games until the void comes to the door, so he knocks at him. Suddenly, the void accrues. And, not long until Lucia shows up trying to say day. But it didn't work. Frozen gets brainwashed and turns like a being crazy. So yeah, Frozen's gone crazy, starts brainwashed. Eventually he gets saved by Incredible Cards, Incredible Mobile, whatever you want to call it, was, you know, the first movie. So Jack Jack Dash and Violet safely escape. Then help to go out to stop the, the endless plan from the so called Divitech ships of Yakti, I think it's named, the big boat. So anyway. So they finally fights back and then finally rescue his parents. They remove his goggles, destroy it. Emmanuel finally defeat the Evelyn. They finally defeat her and finally arrest her. And finally, send her loud and super legal. Are now use it. So everyone's safe and everyone's the world is safe and everyone's happy and everyone's happy. But it turns out the police of contact is trouble. The Bob's parents don't go out and save the world. There's a credit scene was rumor was. We get to see foreshadowing of the the other murders has got away. So that's about it. So anyway, that's about it. That is about the plot reveals this Miss the Incredibles 2. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this one. What do you guys do you think? Let us know your thoughts in the comment below. What do you got it? Be sure don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. So thanks for watching. Bye.